Hi everyone, so today I wanted to make a video that's been a long time in the making and that is a live split and auto split tutorial for those of you that are newer to Destiny 2 speedrunning. Now in order to get started you're going to need to actually download live split and the auto splitter and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. You're going to go to livesplit.org slash downloads, download the most recent version, you don't need any additional components or extra software, and then for the auto splitter itself, this link is available by just typing Destiny 2 Auto Splitter into Google, or it's also available on my speedrunning resources doc, as well as some other places like speedrun.com. But regardless of how you get here, all you're going to do is just click releases, follow the instructions from there, download it, and you should be set. So once you have both these programs installed in your PC, I'm going to briefly go over how both of them work, and then we're going to talk about how to actually get them set up. So first we have Live Split. Live Split is going to be your actual timer. So if you are ever speedrunning a raid or you're watching someone else speedrun a raid and you want a timer in the top right, you can see the timer going, that's live split. And then auto split is something that runs in the background. So your auto splitter is going to be, um, you know, just a program. Maybe you have it on your second monitor. Uh, maybe you have it behind your current window, but it's working in the background and automatically uh, progressing your timer depending on certain objectives that it watches on your screen. So as for the first program, so live split, I'm going to show you guys how to set that up right now. When you first download live split and you just open it up, it's going to look like this black rectangle with the timer in it. And um, if you have the bind set up, you can kind of just use it right off the bat, right? I mean, you can see I've started a timer and, um, you know, you can pause the timer, you can reset the timer, you can kind of just use it as is. Now, that being said, if you want to use it and have more features like splits or sharing, you're going to need to learn a couple of things and I'll explain those things right now. So first of all, as soon as you download Live Split, there's one thing you should do right away, and that's go to settings, and you're going to go ahead and watch these first five hotkeys, and you want to change them to stuff that you know is easy to use. So for me, for example, I have start split, I have start slash split and undo split, um, or sorry, skip split rather, on my side mouse buttons. So you can see I've rebound my mouse buttons because, you know, uh, Live Split is a little bit finicky with those. And the other three I have on my keyboard. I have undo split, reset, and pause for like timer pauses. Uh, the other stuff here you don't really need to worry about too much, it uh, doesn't matter that much. But uh, these five you definitely want to have these set up for the most part. Um, and definitely at least have, you know, start and um, reset. I mean those are, you know, essentials. The rest you don't necessarily need to have, especially if you're just running a timer. But, you know, these are the hotkeys that you're going to need to control your splitter. As for other things, uh, let's talk about live split files. So live split files, live split stores its data in two types of files in LSL and LSS files. So let's talk about LSS files first. LSS files are split files. So if I go ahead and go to my files here and I open up ce.lss, you're going to see all these numbers pop up in live split. Let me just drag live split onto my monitor. Yeah, you can see all these numbers pop up. If I go to edit splits, you'll see that it's been populated by a bunch of numbers. It has a PB, it has segment times, it has your best segments. It has a variety of information that is related to a specific category. So for example, if you are running a mission and you have splits for that mission and you save it into an LSS file, when you reopen that, you'll be able to see your sum of best, your attempt count. It's basically a table that contains all of your run data. So that's what an LSS file is. What is an LSL file? So an LSL file is a live split layout file, and it basically just saves the aesthetics of what your timer looks like. So for example, my timer, if I go to edit layout, you'll see it has the timer at the top, the title at the top, some of best, previous segments, it has the splits, and then it has the actual detailed timer, which contains a normal timer as well as a current segment timer. So that's what a live split layout file does. It allows you to change the background. It allows you to change where all of your splits go, what kind of font it uses, that's basically what a layout file is. Some people, most people I would say, just have one layout file, they customize it to their liking, and they use it for everything they run. I personally make a different layout file for every raid because I like having, you know, the raid in the background looks pretty cool, but you can kind of do whatever you want, allows you to customize it a little bit. So next up we have splits. So in terms of actually managing splits, I will show you how that works right now. So I'm going to go ahead and edit splits as if I didn't have any, and I'm going to kind of briefly walk you through how this works. So these fields you don't really need to worry about. You can, you know, type destiny 2 in here, type run category if you want, change the icon to whatever you want. That's not that important. The meat of the matter is down here. So if you want to add, you know, new splits to a mission you're running, for example, let's say you have a mission that has three splits, right? So three different parts of the mission where you want to keep track of whether you're on pace or not. So you would type, you know, like split one, split two, and split three. 
And then once you press OK, you'll see it appears in my timer. And if I press my start button, you'll see that it starts running. And if I press the start button again or the split button, you'll see it splits and eventually we reach the end of the run. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think uh, splits are pretty self-explanatory. Now I will say you can edit these values to whatever you want. So you can delete your best segments, update them with other people's best segments. But one thing that I think a lot of people don't know about that I do want to talk about is comparisons. So the comparison feature makes it so that by default, live split actually compares against your PB. So for example, if I'm running like this mission and I have a six second PB right now, if I rerun the mission, it'll compare against that PB that I got. So if I if I click a little bit later than I did last time, you'll see I'll be plus and then maybe we'll end, you know, plus against the original PB. Now, if you go ahead and add a comparison, right? So let's say I add a comparison and let's say world record for this mission is a five second run, right? A five second run, you'll see another column gets added to live split and then I can add in my own times that I know are the splits for that run. So you can ask someone to send over their times and you can paste them in this way. They can send you their split file or you can just type it in. So you could go, you know, two, maybe three and then five. And you know that maybe that's the world record. And you, if you want to split against that, you just go right click here, compare against and then boom, five seconds. And now suddenly you're splitting against not what your PB is, but a manually set time that other people have maybe given to you. So that's very, very useful if you are splitting against other people and you want to see how you know close you are to their pace and you don't have, you know, you don't have current record or something like that, you want to split against record, very useful to know about the comparison feature. So that's that. Let's move on to talking about layouts. So layouts are pretty straightforward. Um, I would recommend if you're first doing a live split layout and you want to make it look good, just click all the buttons, see what they do. Um, I'm not going to explain what all of them do. But if you go to layout settings here, you can see that you can change pretty much everything about a layout. You can change the color of a bar. You can change the background, the opacity. The only two things that I'm really going to point out here is number one, there is a button down here called ignore mouse while running and not in focus. This option is really important. If you have your timer on top of your monitor, your main monitor while you're running, especially a full screen game. And the reason for that is because if I have this unchecked, right, if I have this unchecked, and I go ahead and I start running the game, you'll notice that when I move my mouse top right, oh wait, do I actually, hold on. Um, okay. It was on, it's not doing it right now, but uh, there will be times where if you move your mouse top right enough, it will actually appear on the timer and it will click off of your game, which is really, really bad. If you're doing damage or you're like doing a transition and you move your mouse the wrong way by accident, um, it will literally like, it's like tabbing out of your game. So you obviously really don't want that to happen. Now, not everybody runs with their timer on top of their game like I do, but if you do, it's really important that you know about um, this feature. Just have that checked off, okay? Um, that's pretty much it for layouts. Uh, final two things I'm gonna go over when it comes to live split are sharing and running. So first, you can share your live split results, your live split like split file with other people um, using something called splits.io. So splits.io is a third party website and basically what it allows you to do is upload your LSS file and it will analyze the table of data and show you your PB improvements every day, you know, what your tightest segments are, what your loosest segments are. Uh, it'll give you basically run analysis for free. You don't need to do it yourself. A lot of people like to do it by themselves in a spreadsheet, but splits.io will allow you to share those splits with other people as well as watch them yourself. So pretty cool. And of course, if you're too lazy to like screenshot it yourself, uh, there's also Screenshot Imager and Excel, uh, which is a great way to export your LSS files. Excel as well is, is a great way to basically have a, a big load of data, and then you can analyze it yourself if you don't want to use splits.io. So a lot of people don't know about, you know, run sharing, so I wanted to kind of show that off to you guys. And then finally, we have running. So there's two things that I think players should be aware of when running with live split. Uh, number one is live split in case your game crashes or live split freezes you definitely want to be saving your splits every once in a while so you don't lose the data so press this every once in a while pretty pretty useful you know it's kind of like saving a word document of like an essay you're writing you know you want to have that saved pretty often just in case your pc crashes and then finally um some people you may have noticed uh tsunami is an example of a destiny 2 speedrunner who does this but they have their splits on their screen and there's no background like i have it's just transparent and you can see the game behind it it's just text on top if you want to do that, you can use something called chroma key in OBS and set up an element so that it shows up like that on your recording. So you're just going to do add a window capture and then, you know, name it whatever you want. Uh, we're going to set it to live split and then go to that window capture, go to filters, go to chroma key, right? 
And once you have that set up, you can just set it to green, adjust some of these sliders if you need to, and that will key out all of the green so that just the white text or whatever color text you have is on your recording. Obviously, in terms of like actually playing, it, you're still gonna be able to see the background, um, but most people just put their timer on a second monitor and then they just have this overlaid on top of their uh, recording. So that is how that is done. And that's pretty much all I have to say about live split. And we're gonna move on to auto splitting. So the auto splitter, uh, like I mentioned, you download it from Corolla's GitHub. And when you first open it, it's gonna look like this. So there's a bunch of buttons here, but just like live split, it's very straightforward. You wanna set your binds to the identical key binds that live split is using. So make sure these match up with what you're using in live split. And then what you need to do is a couple things. So number one, um, you need to set up the boss health bar color finder, okay? So how do you do that? You're going to go to open split image maker and you're going to go to open boss HP bar color finder. And the reason for this is because um, in Destiny, the boss health bars are actually slightly translucent. And that means that if you're in an environment, for example, let's say you're doing DPS to the crypt security fuses. If you're if the health bar is like on top of this black part versus on top of this white part, um, it'll actually be a slightly different color. So Corolla's auto splitter needs to know the maximum range of colors that it needs to look for in order to look for a health bar if it's auto splitting off of a health bar's appearance or disappearance. So that's actually why we're in Crypt Security. This is what Corolla recommends um, if you are wanting to actually uh, find out the brightest and darkest colors that the health bar can be. So the reason why is because in here, if I go ahead and place my well, you'll see that there are some, there are some, there are two very bright white lights and these are actually pure white. So if I back up and I actually just put the health bar right on top of them, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna click find light color. We're gonna click right on top of the health bar, just like that, boom, we're good. And then we have to do the same thing for the dark side as well. And Deepstone Crypt happens to have a nice black wall here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and mosey our way right into this dark wall. And then I'm going to click find dark color. We're gonna click right on top of the health bar right there. And then boom, I mean, I already have, the, <laughs> I already have the, the color set in there. So you can't really tell that anything's changed, but that is how that works. And then, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and die real quick so that the noise is a bit reduced. And um, the other thing you need to do is set the location of your health bar. So uh, the location of the health bar, okay, well, I'm dead now, so I can't really show you, but all you're going to do is you're going to click the top left corner of the health bar when it shows up. So I'm going to I'm just going to start Crypt security again, and then I'll show you how that works. Um, ever since Corolla's health bar, uh, not health bar, sorry. Ever since Corolla's auto splitter got released, health bars got a lot wider. So this is a lot more forgiving to do, but uh, you, sh you should still do it. And uh, I'll show you kind of what that entails right now. So I'm just going to hide right here and I'm going to click set bar location. And we're just going to click the top left corner of this health bar right there. And you can see it's got a nice chunk of yellow inside that rectangle. So we're set. I'm going to click save colors and we're going to leave. OK, so that's the first thing you need to do if you're going to set up Corolla's auto splitter. If you're planning on splitting off health bars, if you're not planning on doing that, then you don't really need to worry about this. But I would still do it as a preliminary step, especially if you're going to run a bunch of different categories in Destiny. So that aside, let's actually talk about how do you use the auto splitter now that we've got the setup done. So I'm going to open the auto splitter once again, and we're going to go ahead and go to edit slash make new splits. Okay, so I'm going to click that. You're going to see a window opens and you're going to see a bunch of basically uh, split options and then a list of splits. So I'm going to show you guys what a kind of list of auto splits in Corolla's auto splitter looks like, and I'm going to explain what each of these options does. Okay. So let me just leave this Discord call actually because it's going to be a bit awkward to hear those noises. So yeah, let me go ahead and show you what exactly these options do. So the names don't matter. These are just informational so that if you ever glance on your second monitor, you can see what split the auto splitter thinks it's on. But the other stuff is what matters. So these images, the way the auto splitter works is at any given moment, the auto splitter is watching every single pixel on your screen and checking if it matches a certain image. Well, actually, that'd be very inefficient. So it's, it's looking at a very small region of your screen that you've dictated. And it's using that and checking however many frames per second uh, for a symbol, right? For a symbol or some text that's pure white. And when it finds that symbol, it splits, okay? And these other options, dummy split means that it looks for this, but it doesn't split. It moves on to the next check, uh, next objective, right? So a dummy split is really useful for when you have, for example, two objectives back to back. And you don't want, for example, let's say an encounter ends 
and then you want to split on the encounter end, but you don't want to split immediately again when you move into a new area after that encounter, then the dummy split is your best friend because the dummy split basically means you can check for something, but not split on it, right? So that's really, really useful if you have two things back to back. And then you have threshold. Threshold, I would recommend leaving at 0 0.9. Um, this basically means you need a 90% match between the image and whatever is on your screen right now. However, this is not really like, um, this is, you can leave this at 90% because Corolla's auto split method is very, very accurate. And the reason it's really, really accurate is because it only works on white. It only works on pure white text, pure white symbols, and it converts them from an image into a bitmap of zeros and ones. And basically what this means is it doesn't have to look for anything in between. It's not color matching. It's just looking for, is this pixel like a black pixel or a white pixel? Or is it darker than white or is it white? And so it's very, very, very precise, very accurate. So I would recommend just leaving the threshold uh, value alone. Delay is pretty helpful. Delay basically means after splitting, after auto splitting, after matching a certain image, it's going to wait a certain number of seconds before it moves on to checking for the next image. So this is really useful because maybe you know an encounter is guaranteed to last a minimum of 30 seconds no matter what. You can set your delay to 30 seconds and that way your auto splitter is not going to have any false positives during that 30 second window and you know for sure it's going to be fine. Now Corolla's auto splitter is very very accurate, very very precise, so you don't really need to worry about delay too much. But for some things I do have it set up just in case I miss something or in case there's like two objectives back to back and you know I don't want to worry about it, uh, I have some delay set up for that. Okay, so this is how the menu works. Um, one more thing that you should know about, uh, if there is something that you need to manually split because the auto splitter can't catch it, right? There's some things that the auto splitter can't catch because they're not pure white. If there's something you need to manually split, just don't include it here. If you don't include it here and you press your split key on your timer, it will split on your timer, but it won't affect the auto splitter progression. So you could just skip it over. I'll give you an example. The bridge encounter, let's say you want to split dunks, like you want to split preserves. You can do that manually and Corolla's auto splitter won't notice because you pressing the split keys on your mouse or your keyboard doesn't actually change the auto splitter progression. It just changes your timer. In a similar manner, the opposite, right? You can actually, if for example, your timer didn't update correctly or, you know, auto splitter is misbehaving, you can click these controls manually and move the auto splitter to where you need to be and the timer will still run but not split. So you can control both of them individually just in case something goes wrong during a run. But it's very, very helpful to know about this ahead of time so that in case, you know, your auto splitter misses something or there was a wrong split and you want to skip it, you can undo, reset, do any of the things that you need to do ahead of time without touching, um, you know, either one and affecting the other one. OK, so that's pretty useful. Um, finally, I am going to talk about uh, screenshots, cropping and starter files. OK, so you might be wondering, OK, so this is great and everything, but how do I actually get the images for the auto splitter to recognize? OK, so here is what you need to do. Uh, you're going to go to open split image maker, and I'm going to go ahead and get you guys an example of an auto split image. So auto splitter uh, Corolla has kind of two options here. You can either just actually be in game and tab out to the thing, press freeze screen, and then you'll notice that my background is kind of completely frozen. And then, you know, select a part of your screen and then just work with your actual display. Or what I prefer to do personally is if I need auto split masks, I go into an LFG run and I screenshot, I screenshot when I need a mask to happen. So for example, uh, recently I screenshot Crota summoning his oversoul, that's text in the bottom left. And um, I just screenshotted it as soon as damage started and now I have it for later. And then if I go in here, I go to my RTA folder, I go to auto splits, I have oversoul. And this is from an LFG run that I was doing. I literally just have Crota summons his oversoul in the bottom left. I open my split image maker, I click select area. And now when you're selecting an area, you want to pick letters that have a lot of straight kind of parallel lines. If you have anything like curving, like an O or like an E, it's not going to show up as well, especially on 1080p monitors when you have thinner, a lesser amount of pixels representing the same text. So you want to pick stuff that's nice and straight, M's, H's, L's, you know, T's, stuff like that. So I'm going to just go ahead and pick these two M's right here. Sorry, hold on. My bad. Let me just go back to Oversoul real quick. Seems to have opened the wrong image. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and click select area. We're going to drag it over these two M's and you'll notice Corolla's auto splitter tells you which of those pixels are pure white. And you'll see this, it recognized a lot of white pixels here, which is really, really useful. And now we're going to go ahead and kind of make this box smaller. So it only covers the pixels that we want to actually watch, which would be the white ones. And that way this will decrease the computational cost on your computer. 
and that will make it so that the auto splitter runs at a higher FPS and affects your performance less. So boom, there we go. We're going to box it around just the pixels we want to watch. We're going to click save current image. You can name it whatever you want. And then you'll have a nice folder inside of your auto splitter directory with all these nice split images. You can delete the image afterward if you want your original screenshot. And then when you go to edit slash make new splits, right, whenever I get the, the window to open, if you go down to images, you're going to have Oversoul in here. So for example, Oversoul is one I got recently. Boom, Oversoul. And that's how you set up a mask on um, the uh, Corolla's auto splitter. So pretty straightforward. Just basically get a screenshot, uh, do the boxing thing that I showed you, and um, then you'll have an image. So the last thing I'm going to say before I leave you guys is there's a couple images that you should make ahead of time that are exist in almost every single Destiny 2 circumstance. Uh, number one is the ghost. So you'll see when an encounter starts, a little ghost appears in the top middle of your screen. Definitely get a screenshot of this and make a mask out of it because this is appears on every encounter start or on a respawn restricted zone. So really, really useful to have this. Uh, really, really good for that. And then um, I would also have two, two more things. I would have new objective. So the new objective text in the top left. I would have joining allies. You would just get part of the number for that one. And then I would also, three more, I lied. I would also have mission complete. Now, the thing about mission complete is that ever since Lightfall, it's a little bit inconsistent with whether or not it appears on some player's screens. But thankfully, there is something that you can do uh, to circumvent that. And that is, if I can just go ahead and find it, I think it's in my King's Fall folder. Uh, KF auto split templates. No, not here. Okay, let me let me try and find it. Mission. That is not what I was looking for. Maybe this one? Uh, nope, that is old mission. Mission V2. Yeah, there we go. So you'll notice that despite me not having a mission complete banner at the top of my screen here, there is this tab view mission summary that appears in the top left. Now, no matter what happens to you, as long as you complete the activity, you will get this tab view mission summary thing in the top left. And at least on 1440p monitors, the text is thick enough for auto splitter to recognize it. So I would strongly recommend if you are running this game right now, um, in case mission complete doesn't appear on your screen, don't use the mission banner, use this top left tab view mission summary text. It is a much better mask for auto splitter to recognize the end of a mission. So that is pretty much all I have to say for live split and auto split. Um, obviously, make sure you're saving your splits often so that you don't lose your data. Um, make sure you have loaded the most recent version of the auto split uh, files. Uh, I tend to accidentally change the auto split files and not reload it. It doesn't reload it uh, by default. So make sure that you click load splits again and load up your new file if you ever edit something mid run. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed that little guide. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or ask Corolla if you have any questions about his tool. And uh, good luck with runs if you choose to use this in your runs.